Just takes a little effort, we can work it out These things go hand in hand, know what I'm talking about Can we have one without the other, one without the other, yeah One without the other, one without the other, yeah We made it through the test Strengthening love and sex We made it through the test Strengthening love and sex What's going on, everybody? Hello. We are back at it again. It's the Spencers, and we are excited to come to your crib to talk about stuff, baby, that's relevant to what? Strengthening. Love and. Sex. And marriage. And In marriage. marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to talk about all of that tonight, and we're so glad that you're back. And guys, we are dipping in again uh, to, to jump into this, and we're, we're sorry we took a little break. Uh, but we're back at it and we want to talk tonight, babe, about how your heart plays a role in whether or not you achieve an orgasm. You know, so many people that are married want a blissful, sex, sexy experience. Mm -hmm. And we go chasing that orgasm without realizing that if the heart is not right, the orgasm ain't gonna be. Oh, right. the orgasm is not gonna happen if the heart's not right. What 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 stop? What stops the heart? How does the heart stop an orgasm? Many times, when in a marriage, the heart, if there is some animosity going on, mm -hmm. the lack of communication, or if there is just a breakdown, then, and if it's if the moon and the stars are not aligned, then you may not be able to have an orgasm or reach that orgasm. You say that a lot. You say the moon and the stars have to be in, in alignment. What, practically speaking, has to happen for a woman in order for her to be open for that ultimate experience of, of reaching an orgasm? One, we deal with a lot of things that's going on in our mind. We may have a list that may be 10 feet long with all these other things that's going on that may or may not necessarily have to do anything with our spouses. And if we can't clear that list or if there are too many things on that list, sometimes sex becomes another to-do item. Wow. You know, uh, as I'm sitting here thinking, you know, a lot of people, you might think, well, I can't, I can achieve an orgasm if my heart is physically healthy. Because what you're talking about biologically, if the blood is pumping freely through my heart mm -hmm. and my penis gets engorged or my wife's uh, lips and clitoris get engorged, then is that what you're talking about? That's the biological function of the heart, but there's a spiritual and emotional function of the heart that must be clear in order for that energy source. You know, our body is full of energy, right? Right. Um, our chakras uh, are play a role in how the energy flows from our root chakra to our sacral chakra to the, the solar plexus to the heart. I've read somewhere that if the energy that comes from our loins mm -hmm. travels up our spine and gets to the heart and the heart blocks, the passion turns to rage. It, and, and especially if we're armored in a particular place in our body. If we're holding, you know, if we're armored, you know, around our heart, if we're, we're armored, you know, where we, we should be grounded, then that also will play a very pivotal when you role. you say armored, what do you mean by that? Meaning that if we're, we're tense, you know, for lack of better terms, if we're tense or we're having some animosity or things are not going well, uh, again, it, could deal with our spouse or it could not if there's something going on that it may not flow as easily mm -hmm. and so we may have to take as women we may have to take a timeout and what i mean by a timeout is take a bubble bath relax uh read something that is fun to read not just your or romantic or romantic or right erotic. That too, not just your self-help, those are great as well, but something that's gonna put you in that head space that's going to help you relax. Mm -hmm. So the head and the heart, that connection is important for women. Oh, absolutely. And, and I wanna say to all the married couples that you've gotta be full-hearted. Whatever it is you do, you gotta be in it 100% 
because sometimes you can be making love, your body's in the bed, but your mind is on the other side of town. Mm -hmm. Or if your heart is blocked with unforgiveness or resentment, uh, it ain't gonna go too well. Uh, it's like the old song that Atlantic Star used to sing back in 1985 when we were some youngsters. But they say, it's a fragile situation. What? It can fall apart at any time. <laughs> let's get let's let's get to the bridge. It says, if your heart isn't in it, why can you tell me so? If my heart wasn't in it, I'd have gone long ago. Okay, we can't say. <laughs> but what we're trying to say is, your heart has to be in this thing. Yes. The only thing that has sustained Rhonda and I for 30 years is our heart was in it. We had the foundation of friendship, mm -hmm. we had the foundation of love, and yes, we've been through some peaks and been through some valleys, but it's the love, our hearts. We've had to learn how to forgive, right? Yes, yes. If you hold on to unforgiveness, it causes the heart to grow cold. Did you hear what I just mm -hmm. said? Many of us are in relationships where our hearts have turned to stone, a stony indifference because you have refused to let go. You've got to learn how to release that anger release those grudges. Uh, we were talking to our coach today, uh, Coach Amina, and she was talking about how genetically, African-Americans, we carry trauma mm -hmm. from our ancestors. Things that have been passed down subconsciously through the genetic code, and some of those things can play out if we don't address them. But the thing is, sometimes we don't know that we're carrying trauma in our body. So being aware of that and having that know-how to help work through that trauma, to minimize the trauma, to get healing from the trauma, yeah. not just to stuff it under, but to get healing from that trauma, that's when true relationship and heartstrings connecting is, is no other way to describe that. Trauma is when development is being interrupted. And somewhere in the relationship, your relationship was interrupted with some kind of trauma. And it could be, babe, that some women, some men, had trauma introduced to them before they got in the marriage. Mm -hmm. And if that trauma is not addressed and going back to that place of interruption, and you got to pick up on what was interrupted. So if, for example, if somebody was in some kind of abusive situation as a child where they were sexually molested okay. and their innocence was interrupted, you got to go back and give them the agency and the power to have control to say no or to say yes over their sexuality. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times women get, as you said, armored because they never learn how to say no or to say what they wanted. And the power of the no also leads to the power of the yes. So there's a scripture where David says, uh, I said I wasn't going to speak about my discomfort and my bones waxed old. When it is that you do not address the trauma that is in your heart, whether it happened before you got married or during your marriage, that stuff that you carry in your heart by armoring, by holding it, by hiding it, it can lead to physical sickness. So that's why some people have high blood pressure. That's why some people, um, you know, have anxiety attacks. Some people are restrictive because there's no flow. You won't let it go. So your heart has to be in it. Uh, Psalm 38, 9 says, You, Lord, know every one of my deepest desires. The Lord reads and knows the deepest longings of our hearts. Nothing can be hidden from him. What we cannot speak about, he already knows. You know, not only should God know, God knows what's in your heart. Right. But your spouse should too. Definitely, your spouse should know. But there are times that you women and men don't know. They may have a symptom, but they don't know what the cause is. Mm. And so if you don't know what that cause is, you cannot articulate it to your spouse and then expect empathy from your spouse when you are able to describe it to them. I love what you just said. <clears throat> I think it's important, like when you're making love, right? And you're into it, you're, you're, you're having pleasure. And then all of a sudden, you, something pops in your head some negative thought mm -hmm. and you get out of the moment and your spouse is like, what's wrong? You're like, I, I'm, I'm all right. You have to be honest with yourself 
and ask yourself, why am I having a hard time experiencing pleasure? I should be enraptured right now. Mm -hmm. I should be getting close to an orgasm. What? It's like somebody hitting the DJ booth and the record skips. And you're like, wait a minute. Why am I thinking about this now? That's the kind of stuff where you have to go in your heart and do a heart scan and say, what is the, what's the root of this? Right. You understand what I'm saying? And the scan should not take place in the midst oh, no, of no, the no, act. No, 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 no. You know, because you- afterwards. Yes, afterwards, you know, at maybe even the next morning, it's revisited with some pillow talk to say, you know, last night, blah, blah, blah happened. And I thought about this, if you weren't able to work through it yourself, if it's something that needed to be shared with your spouse at the time. That's so good. The heart is the bridge between the physical world and the spiritual world. The heart connects our erotic nature with our higher nature. Mm -hmm. And if the heart is not in a good place, it can block the flow of eroticism. So as much as you want to be freaky, as much as you want to swing off the chandeliers, if your heart has got some unresolved issues, if you have not uh, metabolized your clean pain and processed your pain, it's going to block the flow of your heart chakra. So you got to make sure that that's unblocked. We have to ask ourselves, is there a particular pattern of behavior that keeps surfacing in your heart that block the passion that we should be experiencing when we're trying to make love. You should journal about what, babe? You should journal about not just your day, but your sadness, your stress, your loneliness, the things that you're trying to make perfect in this unperfect world, and any disagreement that you may be having between your head and your heart. Because sometimes when we write those things down, we're not necessarily wanting an answer for someone else to give us that answer, we may be able to find that answer by getting it out of our system. Do you journal? I do journal. And how does it help you? Well, there have been journals in the past that I've written that have been just, I had to burn because I <laughs> had to put so much in it when with anger. And I was like, okay, this is not what I want to do. And then there are journals where I'm you know, where I'm in this word and I'm journal about what God has told me. And then there are, there are so many different ways that I journal. Journaling, I think, helps you to cleanse your heart by putting your thoughts on paper. I know this is counterintuitive to what we're talking about, but Chuck D uh, said in one of his songs, when I get mad, put your, put your, I put it on a pen and a pad it. and give you something that you never had. What he's saying is I'm taking my, my negative emotions and expressing them in an artistic way mm -hmm. to get them out. Right. Because when you allow them to fester, that's when you armor your heart and you're wondering how come my, my desire, I desire my spouse, I wanna be with them, but something's blocking me from giving my all to them. I, I, I notice that when we're in a good space, mm -hmm. when we're communicating well, when we're laughing with each other, it's like you open up like a lotus blossom. And, and the passion and love is on a whole nother level. But there's been moments where you have given me sex because you love me enough to know that that's what I needed, but you weren't full hearted with it. And it wasn't as much of the ecstasy that I've previously experienced because something was wrong. And as your husband, I was able to later like, were you okay? And we were able to talk through some things mm -hmm. as to what was blocking that flow for you. I think it's important that we stay in communication. Uh, are you thinking about inadequacy? Sometimes as men, we wonder, am I good enough? Or I'm gonna keep it real with you. Am I big enough? Mm. You know, men struggle, men struggle with those inadequacies. Am I physically fit enough? And those thoughts can be messing with your head sometimes because, you know, the older you get, you're wondering, do, does she still feel me? Uh, do I still feel the same? Do I still please her? Do y'all struggle with that? Some women may. I think some what struggles. What you saying is you don't. <laughs> I think some of the struggles, mine more are getting out of my head on with life, like things I need to take care of that don't necessarily have to do with the time that our sexy time. So I'm thinking of, oh, I need to do this. I need to get this for the boys. I need to do that, or I need to, you know coach this person. So mine is inundated with busyness that I just sometimes can't get out of my head at the time. 
as a woman, how important is it for the husband to share his heart with his wife? It's, it's so important. If your husband, our husbands have no problem sharing their bodies with us, but the issue sometimes is that they can't share their hearts with mm -hmm. us. And we need both. We need both of them, the, your body and your heart, because that's how we know that we're truly loved. I mean, you, any man can give you sex, any woman can give you sex, mm. but the heart, you can't get each other's heart. Ooh, girl, you better talk your talk. She said anybody can give you sex, but not everybody can give you their heart. And that's the difference between casual sex and committed sex. Casual sex, you may have a great physical experience, but over time, you're missing the spirit and soul connection mm -hmm. because they're not sharing their heart. And man, it, it's so important that we share our hearts. And we went to go see Creed three the other night. Oh my God. Great movie, great, great movie. movie. And there's, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but there's one scene where Michael B. Jordan is struggling with his past. Uh, Adonis is struggling with his past, what happened in foster care. And his wife is like, what happened? You won't open up to me. He said, I don't need you to give me no therapy. She said, I need you to share your heart. Because when we share space, we know when the other spouse is going through something. Mm -hmm. And one of the most frustrating things is, is when you know something's on their heart, but they won't share it. When we communicate, there's three levels of communication. We talk about surface things, about mm -hmm. what's happening. Right. Uh, passing just, all just the information. Passing information. This right. is communicating basic information, like who's picking up the kids or what bills need to be paid. Right. Then there's level two communication sharing our ideas and opinions. I think you look nice, or I don't think you should wear that. Here's the hard one, level three. Being open about our feelings and needs. I feel neglected when you spend more time on social media than talk with me. I need some quality time. And, and when you go to level three, it's important to use I statements and not you statements. Can you talk about that? Oh, yes, because when you're using the I statements, you're saying, you're, you're putting the onus back on yourself. Like, I feel that when you're on social media, that you're taken away from our time, as opposed to saying, you're always on social media. That is being very- And you push on the Antagonist, defense. right. Yeah. You're, the person becomes very defensive, when you go you, you, you all the time, as opposed to lovingly telling your spouse, I need, I feel, I want, as opposed to you this, you that. Let me go back and, and tweak what you just said. You okay. said, I feel like you're taking our time away. Is there, a, is there a, another sweeter way to say that? Um, I would love to spend more time. Yeah, with ding, 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 ding. I like that because still as a man, you still, you still feel like that, uh, like, but if you say, if, if you come and tell me I want to spend more time, I'm like, baby, I want to give you more time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, it gives me a little tingle. I, I want to, I want to give you everything that you need. <laughs> it's very rare that couples effectively reach level three. Yeah. It takes intentionality to do a deep dive into our hearts. And I want to challenge every man out there. It's not, you're not you're not gonna lose your manhood by opening up your heart. It takes a real man to open up your heart and to be vulnerable with your emotions and to name your emotions. Uh, in Creed three, they couldn't, they couldn't. They didn't learn how to name their emotions until the end of the movie. But I think we could avoid a lot of heartache if we name our emotions. James 1.19 tells us what? It tells us to be slow to speak, but quick to listen. Mm -hmm. So meaning that most times in relationships, when you're dialoguing with one another, we're listening to respond. Mm -hmm. We're not listening to hear the other person's heart. We're listening to say, okay, well, he said this, he made that point. Let me think about this as a comeback. But we're not listening to hear our spouse's heart. I think when we open up, babe, and really share our hearts, there's another level of eroticism that we can experience. I've seen it when we've been able to really pull back the layers and talk about what we need to talk about. 
the love making goes to a whole nother level. And you clearing out the dishwasher as well helps. <laughs> <laughs> because it speaks to your love language, right? Right, right. Gifts of helps. Acts of service. Acts of service, acts of service. So y'all, I, I was washing the dishes one day, she came up behind me, she was like, ooh, boy, you make, you making me tingle. I'm gonna have to give you something tonight. I've been washing pans ever since, <laughs> as, <laughs> as much as I, as much as I can. Um, so I think that's what we wanted to talk about tonight is just that it's important that you remove any obstacle that is in the way of y'all having the most passionate sex you've ever had. And the orgasms happen when the heart is clear, mm -hmm. when it's clear of hurt, when it's clear of resentment, when it's clear of, you know, that's why 1 Corinthians says, love keeps no record of, of wrongdoing. wrongdoing. When you take those memories and those things that have happened and put them in the shredder, it opens up the channels in your chakras. So you're from the Rudy to the Tutti, <laughs> you're going to experience a passion like you've never experienced before. Anything else you want to say? I want to say when your heart is pure and clear, it also helps clear up your mind. And so that also helps contribute to being able to spend that more deep erotic time with your spouse because you're not going to automatically run to that list of 20 things. That list can wait because you're thinking at that point, my husband needs me more. I need my husband at this point. But when your heart and your head are cloudy, you're going to go to that list. Yeah. It's important to do your own work, your own cleansing. Make sure you're breathing. Make sure you're exercising. Make sure you're meditating. Here's a practical tip when you're making love. Oh my gosh, it's so good. You, you know what I'm going to say? <laughs> I love this. I love this. Uh, hush, girl. So, uh, <laughs> she was trying to interrupt my conversation. So, one of the things we've learned is this breathing together, sinking our breath mm -hmm. together. When we're making love and looking in each other's eyes and we start breathing. <sighs> together. And but you're 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 breathing into your vagina. Uh, and it's just you can just feel it and visualize it. It's just when I say you right, back, you went back somewhere, didn't you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> breathing. Yeah. So, so when you're taking that deep breath in your nostrils and you imagine you're breathing into your genitals and, and breathing and breathing in that energy up through your chakras, into your heart, into your mind, and you're breathing together in sync, mm. it prolongs the love making. Yeah. You get out of your head and it's like you're in this ethereal cloud floating together. And before you know it, you might even reach climax together, or the climax is it seems extended mm -hmm. when you're in lock, right. when you're when you're in sync, when your hearts are together. So we that's your homework assignment is that when y'all make love next time, look in this camera right here. When y'all make love next time, what they need to do, babe? We want you guys to make sure that the mood is set, mm -hmm. candles are lit, some soft music is playing, but in the midst of it, that you start taking those deep breaths in and exhaling out. Make that audible sound and and we, we want to hear about it. How was, deep I, is your love? That's Keith Sweat, ain't it? <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to go see him uh, in, in a few nights. But we just want to stop by and share just a little bit with you tonight. We hope you enjoyed this podcast. Listen, if you have not uh, subscribed to Dr. Stacey L. Spencer's podcast, channel on YouTube, my YouTube channel. We're on there together. Our podcast, Strengthening Love and Sex, is on there. So go subscribe. We're also on Spotify, Google, Apple. Uh, I'm trying to think of another. All of the platforms, all of the all of the podcast platforms. If you listen to it in your car or you're working out, or if you want to share with a friend, please tell them to go check out Strengthening Love and Sex or Dr. Stacey L. Spencer's uh, YouTube channel. Anything else, sweetheart, you want to say before we get out of here? I need y'all to breathe tonight. I'm ready to go breathe right now. If your heart isn't in it, why didn't you tell? That's not the song we should be saying. Oh, should we say, uh, how deep is your love? 
How deep is your love? Stop. We're going to let y'all go. Listen, go subscribe. We love you guys. If you like it, leave a comment. And please share with every couple that you know needs to strengthen love and sex in their marriage and their relationship. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Just takes a little effort, we can work it out. These things go hand in hand, know what I'm talking about. Can we have one without the other, one without the other, yeah. One without the other, one without the other, yeah. We made it through the test, strengthening love and sex. We made it through the test.